Well, hello and welcome to Do You Need Estate Planning? Hi, I'm Nicole Whip. I'm the founder and the lead attorney of the Family and Aging Law Center. I just want to take a really quick second to congratulate you for spending a few minutes on this really important topic because the reality of the matter is after speaking to hundreds of clients and in front of literally thousands of people on this exact topic, one of the things that I know is that it's what you don't know that hurts you. So let's get into this very important topic. And like I said, give yourself a pat on the back for being here. Okay, so this is the first thing that I think is really important and it is simply this. Most people start with what? And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean, for example, is what do I need? When they call my office, the number one question that I know that most people are trying to get the answer to is, do, hey, Nicole, do I need a will, a trust, or neither? What do I need? But this is the thing. The first step, this, this question, it isn't about the what. The what is just documents after all. It's the will, it's the trust, it's the powers of attorney. It's just paper, it's just documents. Important paper, important documents, but documents nonetheless. It's really about the things that matter to you. We're talking about the why. Why are you doing this? Why are we doing estate planning? And so in this case, we're talking about your money your family, and your values. Now, you may be sitting here thinking to yourself, why does she have a picture of gingerbread man here? Well, it's because of this. You know, I tell this to every single person that I talk to, and it's so true. You know, we are cookie cutter people. We're not little gingerbread man that are running around that were processed by this cookie cutter. We don't all have the same money. We don't all have the same family. We don't all have the same values. Some of my clients want to leave money to charity. Some do not. Some want money to go to only certain members of their family. Others want everything to go literally equally. Some people want to make sure grandchildren are taken care of. Other people, it doesn't matter as much to them that their grandchildren are included. Some people want to leave money to other people like in-laws and friends and other people that have made a difference in their lives. This is what I'm talking about. We aren't cookie cutter people. And so our money, our family, or the other people that we care about and our values are not the same. And that is why we can't look at estate planning as simply documents. We're not cookie cutter people. Why would we want a cookie cutter document? And so then what do I mean by this exactly? I mean, what you're probably wondering at this point, you know, Nicole, what are you trying to say then? What is it? What is the why? And what is it that I should be thinking of? Well, here's some of my questions. You know, one of the questions is how long can your family wait? You know, if you become disabled and here I'm talking unable to manage your own finances while you're still alive, or if you die, how long can your family wait to have access to your money to make sure that things are taken care of? Especially, I would argue, if you're still alive. And are you going to put it in the hands of a judge? Are you going to give that control up to a judge? Because if the answer is yes, that you want to give up the control to a judge, then that's one thing. But for majority of the people that I work with, You say, yes, Nicole, I want to be in charge. I am the one that wants to be in charge. And I want to be the one that decides when my family gets things and how long they need to wait and who gets access to those things. And here's another question for you. Do you have children under the age of 18? Or if you are a grandparent, do you have grandchildren that are under the age of 18 that Either you want to leave money to, or if something, God forbid, were to happen to one of your children, that you'd want to make sure that the grandchildren, the children of your child, um, had access to your money. 
And so this is a really important question that's related to whether you need estate planning or not. Also, this is a really big one for a lot of my clients that they don't tend to think about, which is, do you have privacy concerns for yourself or your loved ones? One of the biggest issues that people really don't realize is how much information becomes public when you do not have a good estate plan. And so you may not care about privacy for yourself and or you may say, well, I have really smart kids. My kids are really smart people like they I don't worry about them. They know what to do. They know about this stuff. I can promise you that they don't really. And I know this because, like I said, I've dealt with hundreds of clients and talked to thousands of people over the years. And one of the things that I have learned is you don't know what you don't know, right? And so the reality is, is you don't even know what the privacy issues are and how privacy people that you don't want getting into your information can get into your information because of a lack of a good estate plan. Um, and if this is something that matters to you at all, then yes, you need some type of estate planning. Do you have minor children and are no longer married to the other parent? So here you are, you have a minor child, you've gotten divorced, and now something happens to you. Well, guess what? The most likely thing, if you don't have an estate plan that spells out otherwise, is that the other parent is going to be managing your child's money. And by the way, this is also true for you grandparents that have divorced children with minor children. If you leave money to your child and then something happens to that child, then it is entirely likely that your ex-in-law is going to be the person that's managing your grandchild's money on their behalf. And I can tell you from years of experience that almost nobody wants this happening. Yes, there are a few people that want their ex or, you know, their ex son or daughter-in-law to be managing their child's money if something happens to them. That is extremely rare. And so if you're one of those people that does not want that to happen, then you need some type of estate planning. Now, in today's day and age, as I film this today, this question, do you have a taxable estate, really doesn't apply to a lot of people. But I love this picture of this guy here because you know what? He doesn't want anybody touching his money. That's his, right? And most certainly doesn't want Uncle Sam reaching Uncle Sam's hands into his pocket or into his piggy bank. So the thing is, is today, a taxable estate is a very rare thing for most Americans. You have to have a lot of money to have a taxable estate. But the problem is that you don't know when you're gonna die. You don't have a crystal ball. And because you don't know when you're gonna die, you don't know what a taxable is gonna, estate is gonna look like in the year of your death. If you are concerned at all about Uncle Sam getting a hold of your money, then if you're concerned about possibly having a taxable estate in the future, then you need some type of estate planning. Are your adult children married? So a majority of the people that come in to see an estate planning attorney like myself or an elder law attorney like myself are people that have adult children that are already married. And this is important because if you have adult children that are already married or you think may become married in the future, one of the questions you really wanna be asking yourself is, if something were to happen to my child, do I really want my son or daughter-in-law to be the person that gets my money? And if that happens and they get remarried and that my money goes to their new spouse, am I going to be okay with that? And the reason I bring this up is because most of my clients, they don't want that to happen. They don't want the situation to occur where if something happened to their child, that the money would go directly to the spouse of that child. They either want it to go to the grandchildren or to their other children. And if you feel that way, then you need some type of estate planning. Do you have a blended family? You know, this is of course the most iconic blended family in America, the Brady Bunch. 
But I always say to us people all the time, you know, most of my families, most families are not the Brady Bunch. You know, the Brady Bunch, they had their ups and downs. They fought, but they also loved each other and they always had each other's back. Well, most modern blended families don't necessarily work that way. Most people, you have his and her kids. You want your money to go to your kids and not to his kids. You want, if you're the grandparent, your money to go to your kids and grandkids and not to his kids and his grandkids. I mean, these are issues that a lot of people face. And so if you have a blended family and you want to control who the money goes to, you definitely need some type of estate planning. Does anybody that you care about have an addiction? Are they liable to creditors? Or are they just simply financially irresponsible? Like I always say, you know, you love them to death, but you give them a buck and they spend 10. And I know that almost everybody has a family member like that. But you know, we also do have family secrets, family pain. Um, you know, a lot of my clients have loved ones. They're wonderful people, but they do have gambling and drinking and drug addictions or, you know, uh, mental health issues that really don't um, enable them to be financially responsible, even as adults, even if they're great people, they just aren't in that situation. And if you have anybody like that in your life, but you still want to provide something for them, then you definitely need some type of estate planning. You know, I, this is an, this is a topic near and dear to my heart because as a law firm owner, I am a small business owner and this is true. You know, if you own a business, you need some estate planning. And I will say this, almost no business owner has good estate planning. So if you own a business, you need some estate planning, definitely. Do you have any disabled loved ones, people that um, really can't take care of things themselves? Now here we're talking, not somebody maybe with an addiction or something, but somebody that's truly disabled. Or is there somebody in your life that could become disabled in the future? And guess what? My answer to that is, of course there is, because we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know if somebody that we care about is going to need nursing home care in the future. We don't know if somebody's going to get in a car accident and get a traumatic brain injury. We don't know if somebody's going to have a stroke. We don't know. We don't have that crystal ball. And I always tell people good planning is about hoping for the best because of course, I don't wish this upon anybody. I don't wish this upon any family that something like that would happen. But we plan for the worst. We hope for the best, but we plan for the worst. And so if you have any idea that this could happen to somebody in your family in the future, then you want to have good estate planning. You know, um, a majority of people in my market area do have IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, or other tax deferred investments. And the thing about those types of investments is that there are special legal rules around those types of investments and what happens when you leave them behind to other people. And so if you have a tax deferred investment like an IRA, 401k, 403b, then you really want to know what your planning options are, especially if it makes up the bulk of your money, because it can make all the difference in the world about what you leave behind and how much tax your loved ones are going to pay. In fact, far more than a state tax in today's environment, tax deferred money poses the greatest risk of taxation to you and your state if you don't take care of it through good planning. Okay, so a lot of times one of the things that we see is that people will put maybe their grown adult children, their responsible children as their primary beneficiaries, and then they have their grandchildren maybe as contingent beneficiaries on their um, assets, okay? And one of the questions that I always ask people is, do you really want your 18-year-old grandchild to get their hands on a big chunk of money? And what a big chunk of money is, is of course relative. Because if you're 18 years old and you've never had five or $10,000 before, you've never had five or $10,000 before, 
never mind 50, 100 or more thousand dollars, right? And so what are you going to do with that money? Do you have the right people in your life that are going to advise you? And are you going to listen to that advice at that age? Um, and as a parent or grandparent, do you trust that no matter how great your kids or grandkids are, and you know, I know most of my clients really do have great kids and grandkids, but I also know that these kids and grandkids are immature, you know, financially immature. They don't have the life experience behind them to make good financial choices. And sometimes we want to make sure that if we leave money behind to them, that our money is going to be responsibly used by them for their future. If we're going to leave them money, that they're going to be responsible about it. And so if this is a concern of yours, then you definitely need some type of estate planning. Okay, and here's my final question is, are you concerned about nursing home poverty? You know, as an elder law attorney, this is the biggest issue that I deal with in my office because if you aren't concerned about it, I would just urge you to get a little more educated about why you should be. And certainly in my office and on our website, we have multitudes of resources about what that really means. But the fact is, is that great planning, planning like the type that we do in our office can make the difference about whether you or your loved one ends up in nursing home poverty or if they don't. Because the good news is, is that we can plan to avoid nursing home poverty. We can avoid the nursing home and the government taking all your money and all of it's legal provided you do the right things. And that's what good planning is all about. So if in asking any of these questions, you said, hey, yes, I am concerned about any of those things that I asked in any of the previous slides, then you do need some kind of estate planning. And really those questions are just a few of the questions that we address when we talk to you or our clients about estate planning. And when we know the answers, the what, the do you need a will, trust or neither becomes clear. Because what you need, and this is the bottom line lesson here for everybody, what you need is really or should be based on what matters to you, not just about documents. And if you want, we can help. Give us a call and thank you for listening.